challenges and opportunities for Sri Lankan engineering professionals in the emerging maritime hub. I think uh, Dr. Virasinga Dr. spoke about the hub concept and particularly we may have select certain specific areas. And maritime hub is one such area that has been selected. So, uh, oh, this is there a case for Sri Lanka in the maritime hub? There's a lot of debate, discussion, criticism, some of the arguments that I might present will uh, answer some of these issues. Yes, there is a strategic location convenience for Sri Lanka, where many uh, sea lanes coming from uh, many parts of the world are crisscrossing at Kalam. So this is one strong argument that is put forward by uh, the, the proposers. Yes, it has a, it has a opportunity. This is also uh, proven by the world shipping routes, by traffic density if you take. Uh, the yellow line is the maximum density, and Sri Lanka is in the, again on the maximum density area. So there is an opportunity uh, for Sri Lanka in that also. I'm going to bring a hypothesis that was presented by a very eminent person in shipping, uh, particularly uh, shipbuilding area. Uh, none other than uh, Mr. Ueda, who is the chairman of, or rather the president of uh, Class NK. He said uh, he has seen in his life shipbuilding moving from Europe to Asia, particularly to Japan, and then gradually moving down to Korea and Far East. He said along with that, even shipping started moving from uh, far, uh, Europe to Asia. Uh, Asia. So much so that today if you take the largest tonnage of vessels are in Japan, Korea, China and other areas. You can see the green pack, European ship uh, ownership is uh, dramatically diminishing. So the entire shipping, shipbuilding has moved from Europe to Asia. This is another argument that there is a shift of the shipping industry from west to the east and coming downward. And then his hypothesis is not only it moves from west to the east, it has started to move from southwards, from west towards Dubai, Bahrain, the Gulf, and you see a lot of new facilities are coming up there. And then from uh, Japan, Korea, it is coming down to Far East. So naturally, there is a great opportunity for Sri Lanka and India to be the next uh, kind of potential area. So these arguments uh, somewhat presents the case for Sri Lanka, and it looks positive. Now, how does the government of Sri Lanka looks it at from a macro uh, policy kind of a framework? We are all aware of the five hub concept, and emphasis is given to uh, the maritime hub, uh, and then energy hub, aviation hub, uh, the commercial hub, and the knowledge hub. So the maritime hub, in, in particular, talks about uh, this requirement, and engineering, uh, definitely is an area where you need a lot of uh, uh, development and, and achievement because I don't think that you can conquer or, or you can work on the maritime hub concept without engineering. These are some of the pictures that I have extracted from the port construction work that has been happening. This is not necessarily my area, but I thought I'll share. So these are huge challenges. Today we invite lot of foreign contractors, foreign consultants, foreign designers to come and work in Sri Lanka. I know some of these are designed by Sri Lankans as well. There's a lot of involvement, but still we depend a lot on other countries to give this technology back to us. Now I move on to my own terrain. If you take the major attributes of the maritime hub, you will see ports, harbors, and navigation. I don't need not uh, elaborate much. So much of development work is happening. Then comes shipbuilding, ship repairing, and logistics industry where we are involved. This is one of those areas uh, where mm, the engineering knowledge, vocational education, and all that is in put into testing. So these are some of the work that is being done at Colombo Dockyard. You will go into some more details in that later. Of course, maritime safety and emergency response is, is another area. This is a decent university. So uh, in order to develop the maritime hub concept, you must have three more to uh, uh,
Then the offshore activity is in uh, uh, oil, gas, uh, other minerals explorations in the uh, oceans, and Sri Lanka is having or going to have almost 20 times of the sea area, uh, land area uh, in sea. So definitely it has a potential. But to do that, I 100% agree with uh, uh, Dr. Virasinghe, building capacity, particularly not only infrastructure, but building the HR capacity, building the vocational technologies, the practical engineers who can really get into work. So you, you see some of the pictures, because of time scarcity, I'm not going to go into that. But uh, these are some of the challenges that we have to overcome. And we, as a company, I'm presenting my case through what has been done at Colombo Dockyard in order to entice perhaps the entire um, population here. We started 30 years back, or 40 years back rather, with very basic facilities. We didn't have any of these technologies or anything of that nature to start with. What you see over here is a keel laying, people getting ready for a keel laying of a ship. Uh, we don't have cranes or any of the latest technology. We had to wait till tea time, collect all the people, use manpower, just everyone get together and lay the key. But of course, things have dramatically changed. Our initial approach uh, had been uh, uh, building whatever we can. We started with 14 meter boats. I'm sure Dr. Vimalathiri is going to talk about planing hulls and hard chain boats. This is for the Sri Lanka Navy. Then uh, 20, so these were initially detection of contraband. But the moment the extended economic zone came, we had to build bigger vessels. 40 meter vessel was a huge challenge for us in 1980s, 82, 83. I remember an anecdote I heard from a senior Lloyd Survey that at that time, President Jayavardhana, who was the executive president of this country, uh, wanted to know whether this vessel can be built in Sri Lanka because Kalamu Dockyard was very eager to build it. So we put a bid into the process. Then he checked with uh, this Lloyd survey, can Kalambu Dockyard build this? His straightforward answer was, no sir, I don't think they can. But he said, if you don't give him a, them a chance, no one will. So if you want Kalambu Dockyard to prosper, to start shipbuilding, give them an opportunity. Let them go through it and learn. And that's how we started the 40 meter project, which was a legendary project for us. But there are, of course, of course, circumstances, changes. There are many officers from the Sri Lanka Navy. We required high speed, littoral warcraft, more complex vessels. We infused early 90s uh, technology from France to uh, work on high speed aluminum craft and since then came up with series of uh, vessels, uh, uh, almost four uh, generation, four series. And the latest has been one of the best littoral crafts that we could have come out and more than 40 vessels have been built uh, using local engineering technology, local designs, local uh, expertise. But we don't stop there. That's the point I want to make. This was a good opportunity for us to learn, practice what we have learned. We need to go beyond that. So we didn't stop there, we moved way beyond that. Now these are some of the projects we came up. Because being a hub, it is not only your country, you need to move further. These are some things we have done for Maldives. Uh, 35 meter vessels, 40 meter vessels out of aluminium. It's the same aluminium concept that we use for Sri Lanka, but not for littoral warcraft, but for a different purpose. Multi-day petrol boats have come up. Again, why only defense industry? Why not commercial industry? We moved into oil and gas industry. It requires faster movement of uh, crews, technicians, etc. So we came up with concepts of crew boats using the same technology. Tug boats. We were building harbor tugs. Finally, we ended up building sophisticated tugboats for the uh, oil and gas industry. What we do is we don't try to invent the wheel. We look at not a particular product. We work with the systems theory. We look at equipment and explore how we can add value, how we can make it better. And that complexity is what made our product more acceptable in the international market. So today we look at some of the vessels here. Colombo Dockyard PLC presents a new breed of multi-purpose platform supply vessels optimized for eco-friendly operation in all weather conditions worldwide. The new platform supply vessel is 78 meters in length. 
So what are the challenges for companies like us or anyone who is trying to venture into this uh, field? One is infrastructure. We spoke about that. Country-wise, we need infrastructure. Institutions-wise, also, we need infrastructure, but that's not a, you know, know-how and skill. I 100% agree with Dr. Virasinghe. This is a critical area. You may have infrastructure facility. We had dry docks for hundreds plus years, but you can't build ships because you have facilities. You need people who can understand the technology, who can deliver results. Capital expenditure, technology management, project management, cost management, quality management, SA management. There's a series of heaps of things that you need to go through. If you can't do that, then today we have just launched the largest vessel we have built is a 98 meter long, 400 passenger vessel for the government of India. So to do these kind of things, some of the challenges comes through technological advancement. Technology moves forward while it's not stagnant. So we need to keep up with the technology challenges. Today we are looking at environmentally friendly vessel, more safer vessels, better fuel efficient vessels. So if you can't meet such requirements, you are no longer in business because this is a commercial operation. It's not something that you have built and then, uh, then allow future generations to earn. You have to justify whatever expenditure you do and then uh, make business. Some are ship construction driven. Construction methodology is changed from what it was earlier. So how do we change even people like welders, fitters into building modern vessels? So consistent capital infusion is a necessity. So you, if you are not commercially viable, you will not be able to do that, most of the industries. This is a serious challenge. So you have to upkeep. Other countries are way above you in terms of technology. So you may have to bring in some of the latest technologies at very high cost if you want to compete internationally. Skills development, retention is a major challenge. The shipyards are now converting into knowledge-based industries from labor-intensive industries. Earlier it was high labor-intensive industries. We are still labor-intensive industries. But the future is for knowledge-based uh, workers to work in this area. Naturally, these challenges are not without any opportunities. For me, challenges are like those. If you can overcome, if you can open it, if you can look at what is beyond it, there is a bright future. So these are the opportunities that may come. We know uh, in the domestic domain, there is a uh, lot of discussion about uh, offshore oil and gas exploration and mineral exploration. So we believe that we are in the right track toward that. Within the next three to five years time, when these activities get rooted, deep rooted in Sri Lanka, we are a company that can definitely work along with it, competing internationally. Indian Ocean uh, regional demand for Coast Guard and other fisheries protection and naval maritime safety, this vessel requirement will definitely grow and we are almost ready to deliver those vessels, including passenger cars. So we are preparing ourselves to meet the gap that is not filled by major players. So you need to position yourself also, where can you fit in in this whole global exercise? Because if you try to do be the topmost, maybe that is a very ambitious uh, goal, but you may not be able to achieve it. But you need to picture yourself, we also can't go with the lowest end, so maybe there is a decision that you need to take. And we as industry has done that. Last slide. This is not possible without efforts of a lot of people. And I know this is uh, His Excellency the President visiting the opening of the new South Port. This tug was built by us. And uh, so first, thanks to all national leaders who understood country's priorities without politics and gave us opportunity to perform for the last 40 years. Of course, the Sri Lanka Navy is present here, present as all past commanders who had confidence in local built vessels and gave us that opportunity amidst toughest challenges. They had to sacrifice lives, but they still trusted what we do. I think that's, that's the best uh, encouragement you can receive. Of course, the Sri Lanka Ports Authority, which gave us initial breakthroughs into tug building and other uh, these things. All our customers who has consistently keeping confidence on us. Above all, all Sri Lankan. I think we are a Sri Lankan company 
they are always encouraging us. Every word of encouragement is supporting us to move forward. But last but not least, to all our employees, including our Japanese partners, who made it possible. Thank you very much. That's all what I would like to say.